Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the Spanish press. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, my longer term supporters on Patreon, and the new channel members. Thank you very much for that support. Now, straight into the news, and it seems that the European Union may have thrown a spanner in the works for the Spanish government when it comes to getting that Catalonian amnesty deal done quickly. Because as we can read here, Reinders stresses that the amnesty law will be suspended until the European Court of Justice resolves the doubts of the courts. The European Commissioner for Justice, Didier Reinders, has stated that the amnesty law will remain inapplicable until the Court of Justice of the European Union resolves the questions referred to it by Spanish judges or courts for preliminary rulings, and this regardless of what national legislation establishes. This is what the Commissioner maintains in response to a question posed by the head of the European delegation of the Citizens Party, Adrian Bathgeth. Reinders's letter is based on four elements, an article, a recommendation, a principle, and case law. So there we go, the EU's Commissioner for Justice stressing that the amnesty law will be suspended until doubts are resolved. And as I said, a spanner may have been thrown into the works or plans of the government to get this amnesty deal out of the way quickly. Now, keeping on the subject of Catalonia and the desire that some Catalans have, I'll repeat that, some Catalans have to separate from Spain is still making headlines today because Catalonia President Aragonés has proposed an agreed referendum with the question, do you want Catalonia to be an independent state? The president of the Generalitat, Pere Aragonés, has proposed calling a referendum on self-determination in Catalonia, agreed with the Spanish state, and has argued that the best way to do so is through Article 92 of the Constitution to answer yes or no to the question, do you want Catalonia to be an independent state? In an informative appearance at the Palau Fente Yes, Aragonés presented the content of the report that the director of the Institut de Estudios de Alto Govern, João Ridal, gave him on Tuesday, which identifies the specific legal instrument to carry out this consultation. So there we go, the president of Catalonia, Pere Aragonés, proposing an agreed referendum with the question, do you want Catalonia to be an independent state? And I'll open this question up to you guys, the viewers, and I'll get your responses in the comment section below to that question. Catalonia independent state or not? Let me know. And anybody who thought that this whole Catalonia independence saga had gone away had better think again because it's back with a vengeance. Now, another person who is still dominating headlines here in Spain, unfortunately for us, is the former head of the Spanish Football Federation, Luis Rubiales. And the Civil Guard is claiming that he diverted 3.8 million euros from the Football Federation to the construction company that paid him and puts his commissions at 530,000 euros. The Guadi Civil claims that the former president of the Royal Spanish Football Federation diverted at least 3.8 million euros to the construction company Grug Consa and the company that operates the La Cartuja Stadium in Seville between 2020 and 2022. It adds that this company Company, then transferred part of the money to a company controlled by a close friend and partner of Luis Rubiales, Francisco Javier Martin Alcaide, alias Nene, under the name Dismatic. Finally, the investigators have proved that Rubiales himself has been receiving funds from his friend's companies in the form of profits. So that's the level of corruption we are dealing with here in Spain and all of these brilliant minds that are behind these master schemes. Take 3.8 8 million euros from the Royal Spanish Football Federation, put it into a private company, and then take a commission. you got to be a genius. But we know what will most likely happen here, and that is that Mr. Rubiales will be convicted of this alleged crime. He might go to prison for a couple of years, but guaranteed we will never see anything of that 530,000 euros, or perhaps more money that has been stashed away. And how do we know that this will be the most likely outcome? Because it's happened time and again here in Spain over the last 40 years. 
And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and one of the strangest stories that I have seen for a while, involving a speed camera in the north of Spain, and it is that a speed camera in Sierra Asturias has been removed because the postal workers can't cope with so many fines. It registers up to 300 fines a day. It's a rotating speed camera changing location within the city so that drivers do not know where they are. There are several boxes distributed around the town, but they do not always contain the speed camera inside, restricting the speed to 30 km per hour. The speed camera installed in the Asturian town of Lugones, which belongs to the Council of Sierra, has caused the major problem that is bordering on collapse. There are so many penalties registered by this detector that the postal work workers are unable to deliver all the fines on time. 15,000 speeding fines have been recorded, with more than 300 fines in a single day on several occasions. So there we go, and as I said, a strange story about a speed camera that has had to be removed because it's issuing too many fines and postal workers can't keep up. So an example of town hall revenue raising at its very best here in Spain. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from user ZM, religious processions may be important rituals, but you can't live without water. At the end of the day, water, rain, winds, in my view. Yeah, user, thanks for the comment and referring to something that was mentioned in yesterday's live stream about how the heavy rains in Andalusia in particular put a dampener on the religious processions over the Easter period and some people are not happy. And I posed the question, which would you prefer, dams full of valuable water or annual religious processions? And anybody who chooses the latter of those two options, in my opinion, needs to get their head red. One here from Mikael, the rain was very important. Now the dusty brown hills are green. Also, it gave the Andalusian authorities some more time to sort out the water shortage problem. Yeah, Mikael, thanks for the comment, and you're right, the water that fell over that Easter period in places like Andalusia was very, very important indeed. It has also given the authorities down there in Andalusia more time to sort out those water shortage issues, or in other words, kick the can further down the road and let somebody else deal with the problem, because I can guarantee that nothing will be done in the short term. One here from High Kick in Colorado in the US, you can only get fast food after 1 to 2 a.m. AM. Most bars close at 2 a.m. if I remember correctly. Here in California, even the fast food joints are closed after 10 to 11, at least near me. I look forward to access more nightlife again in Spain. Thanks for the videos. Yeah, hi kick. thanks for the comment. And this is a debate that we have been having in recent times here on the channel, opening hours of bars and restaurants around the world, not only here in Spain, but in other countries too. Somebody yesterday pointed out that in Canada, bars are open till 2 or 3 a.m. And I said here in Spain, they're open to that time too, even later. But the problem is with restaurants in this country, which sometimes are open till 1 a.m. Or at least you're allowed to stay in the restaurant until that time. You probably won't get served food at 1 a.m., but you'll be able to sit there and finish your meal if you have ordered it before. But as we have established in the comment section on this channel, the majority of people are in favor of being able to get a meal late at night here in Spain and they don't want it to change. And honestly speaking, I don't think things are going to change anytime soon, at least in the summer months here in Spain, when it comes to opening times of restaurants, in spite of what some politicians may say. One here from user, this guy knows absolutely nothing about Spanish people and politics. I had a property there from 1997 to 2022. Everything was great there until 2016 and the UK voted to leave the EU. All of a sudden, the Spanish hated us. For far too long, the UK taxpayers had improved their roads and infrastructure and now the money stopped and not before time. I hung on there as long as I could, but it wasn't the same anymore. It was time to go. Yeah, user, thanks for the comment and the first thing I'm going to say to you is good riddance. The best thing that could have ever happened to Spain is that you sold up and got out of the country. Because with that attitude, mate, who wants you here? One here from Patricia, prostitution is the oldest trade. After thousands of years, no government can possibly imagine they are going to prevent it. If they think they can, they are dreaming. Yeah, Patricia, thanks for the comment, but the current Spanish government, the coalition government here, thinks that they will be the government to prevent prostitution 
Union in this country. And a lot of people in the comment section on this channel, from what I have seen, share your sentiments, Patricia, and think that the Spanish government is dreaming if they believe that they can end the issue of prostitution. But as always, time will tell. One here from Lee. Hi, Stu. Re-football and racism. Change can only be achieved by hitting clubs in their pockets, cancel matches at home and impose hefty fines. If it continues, relegate the guilty clubs. Yeah, Lee, thanks for the comment, and I agree totally with what you say there. The best way to deal with racism in football in this country is to hit the clubs hard. Sounds easy, right? I wonder why they don't do it. And the final comment here from Trini, I moved to Spain from the Caribbean for the lifestyle and quality of life. I think that three-hour break in the day and late evenings add to the quality of life. Yeah, Trini, thanks for the comment and your opinion on this matter, and it's clear that you are in favour of the three-hour lunch break in the middle of the day and late evenings here in Spain. But can I ask, are you working in a business that closes from two to five in the afternoon? If so, what do you do with your time? Or are you working tables in a restaurant until 1 a.m. or half past one in the morning? Again, let me know if that is the case. And if it is, fair play to you. But in my opinion, I couldn't think of anything worse than having to put up with those working conditions. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.